Great. Good to see you all again. This is a special module on uh, artificial intelligence. In particular, I had done this during the US Senate briefing, uh, during the AI caucus. So it's kind of a redo of that, but more importantly, it sets the stage up for uh, the impact of AI in the coming world. Okay, great. So I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to introduce the context of AI and then speak about three things. The first thing is I'm going to talk about AI in the physical world. Next, I'll talk about reducing the so-called adoption lag, which is actually a very complex issue, but I'll try to make it simple uh, and kind of present the view that uh, we have to take as a nation in terms of various investments that we are making in order to help AI trigger greater growth in our economy. And lastly, I'll present the new challenges that uh, AI poses, and in particular, in education. All right, so here's a brief history of AI. So of course, we are standing on the shoulders of giants. And as I was presenting the AI module the last semester and before, some of the students thought there's, well, a lot of AI. But in reality, uh, our point is uh, taken up that this year, we had a Nobel Prize uh, given to Dr. Jeff Hilton in the artificial intelligence area. So AI originally started out in the 1940s as neural networks, and we'll talk a little bit about it. Then came Perceptron, uh, was proposed by Frank Rosenblatt, and later on the machine learning term was coined by Arthur Samuel, and more importantly, 1986, the backpropagation algorithm was proposed by Jeff Hinton. Of course, this new form of AI was much ignored. And I'll talk about it. Uh, you'll realize that why it has come into uh, importance, especially since the last few years. Then we had the NVIDIA's GeForce 256 as a GPU launched in 1999. Of course, NVIDIA is now heading out to become a tri uh, $5 trillion company, perhaps the most valued. Uh, but all this started long time ago. Neural network-based speech recognition came up, 2009, and the 200-layer neural networks, 2012 to 15. Then 2015 was marked by AlphaGo, defeating professional human Go player, and it drew more public attention to the neural networks. The real big breakthrough in terms of what is triggering this new era in AI happened in 2017, in a paper written by a bunch of authors from Google. Uh, in particular, it was called Attention is All It Takes. This single work has had substantial impact on all the current AI happening. So if you forget all that is going on here, two important things, 1986, then the next one um, around 2011, the Deep Neural Network paper in Nature by uh, Jeff Hinton uh, and co-authors, and then the 2017, the Transformer era, which all of you are now exposed to in terms of ChatGPT, GitHub, Copilot, Adobe Firefly, so on and so forth. That happened, all happened in 2023. Okay, let's uh, kind of peel back and see what's going on. This is a key paper in the history of AI called the um, Transformer. And the attention is all you need, Ashish Baswani and several others uh, from Google. And it turns out that the big uh, crack in this area in terms of commercialization actually was done outside Google in OpenAI. But in general, this paper introduced a transformer architecture, a novel neural network architecture that has had a profound impact on various AI applications. The key innovation, the transformer architecture is the attention mechanism. So what does this attention mechanism allow you to do? Basically, it enables the model to understand context in a more sophisticated and nuanced way compared to earlier architectures. And we'll talk about it. Uh, prior architectures paid attention to word prediction before and after and so on. And it didn't really model context in a more holistic sense. Uh, the attention mechanism allowed the transformer to model the local context and project that during real-time use, because all these networks are pre-trained. We'll talk about that later. But the general purpose AI models, as it's called now, have wide applications. It's not just one single application for 
the current natural language processing based idea that the attention network models, but it can be applied across areas, right? So that's why it's called a general purpose transformer. The end user only need to run the inference, which is much cheaper and easier than training the model from scratch. So all the training is done by these large companies. And of course, you need um, millions of dollars of uh, uh, GPU and many other things, the engineering architectures that have to be built on it and so on and so forth. So pretty much the large companies started controlling this uh, uh, gamut of various applications that are more foundation model based. So this allowed AI to spread very rapidly. Well, recently. So if you kind of look at it, okay, there is AI. We have had other kinds of things happen um, in the past several decades. But more importantly, I want to talk about how AI is likely to impact future jobs and as we move forward, future technologies. And this is, uh, is important for many of you uh, who are in industry or going to go out in industry to sort of understand how AI can be used by you in not only software-based systems, but also physical architectures and machines and robots and so on and so forth. So the exposure of the job to the technology is on the y-axis and the x-axis is the average income of the job. This is a model uh, which was suggested by Michael Webb 2023 and also by OpenAI confirmed uh, by their uh, projections in terms of what might happen. So if you take robotics in general, it's going to only affect average um, income of jobs which are very low, right? Um, Roomba is actually the most prevalent robot today uh, in addition to many other uh, ones like uh, Kiva and so on. Most of these robots are just traveling platforms. They don't have arms. Then the software IT revolution, you can sort of suggest that um, hit the mid-level. So the robots hit the low skill, low paid jobs, uh, they were the most exposed, while well, high skill roles are less affected. Middle skill jobs, uh, typically the software, bore the brunt uh, of the software impact, the IT revolution. Uh, but AI is very different. It is going after upper middle skill jobs, particularly the high salary brackets. So if I were a regular run of the mill programmer, just doing all the standard stuff, I would, of course, uh, be afraid of AI, right? So which roles uh, it's likely to affect? Well, perhaps not the CEOs, but uh, roles like uh, lawyers, accountants, and many other routine kind of jobs face significant exposure. And typically the projection is going to peak at the 88 percentile of the job salaries. So um, automation generally brings the cost of things down, but what normally happens is one doesn't say, great, I'll have the same amount of stuff. They say, I want more of the same stuff now, give me more. Right? That's how humans work. So if the cost of producing software comes down, what is going to happen is we are going to create more of the same things. There are going to be more people who have less of an expertise in traditional computer science and algorithms that are related to software engineering that are going to be able to produce more things quickly. Yes, so what is going to happen is soft, software standard um, and other standard CS kind of algorithmic and programming jobs will be depressed in salary. But the ones that are using AI can become more productive and better. But you may not need a, for example, a CS degree to do these kinds of jobs, right? So this is a substantial technological shift, not just in the software area, but many more. So history has suggested that humans tend to be overly pessim pessimistic about the, uh, about the impact of new technologies on the uh, economy. At the beginnings of every technology revolution, fear spread that technology will wipe out many jobs. For example, great economists such as Keynes, Heilbronner, and Leontief made such predictions. They were not entirely wrong, but they did not fully anticipate the nuanced ways in which technology advancements would impact the labor market. In each of the earlier technology revolutions, Jobs were automated, but jobs were also created because the surplus wealth created was spent on more labor intensive industries. For example, when farming was mechanized and it's still being automated, for example, at Purdue, there's an IoT for Ag ERC, right? Um, and uh, the current trend is more and more automation in the agricultural domain, all kinds, right? Labor 
at this time was absorbed by manufacturing because manufacturing was growing. Societies got richer because farming productivity grew and they spent their excess wealth on manufactured goods. In the recent years, these manufactured goods have gotten far more productive. Societies have spent more money on labor intensive activities and will continue to such as education and healthcare. So essentially we start spending money on other areas that AI can't impact that are important for us. So maybe AI portends a lot of good as we go forward. Of course, AI also comes with all those predictions of uh, the superhuman AI and so on and so forth. Um, but then with AI, humans will specialize in tasks and industries that AI cannot do. For example, the care economy, caring for children or elderly is expected to be put, um, and it is continuing to put massive strains on societies as the world ages. This sector, for example, can absorb lots of labor, but it's unlikely that AI can provide the same sort of connections that humans do. Maybe that's also an opportunity in the future. So the thing one is the physical stuff. So I'm going to talk about AI in the physical world. Uh, by the way, this image was generated using AI, but later edited by a human, Jared Pike, uh, one of our uh, mechanical engineering uh, consultants. I wanted to thank him. Multitude of AI inside products, processes, and businesses have not yet been thought of. So what we have to do is we have to free ourselves from fixating on existing jobs and industry, and instead think about the increase in the size of the pie, not have a fixed pie mentality. But of course, we are going to be under strain because jobs shift and it is not easy to upskill and retrain people in totally new areas which require totally new types of skill sets. But a lot of companies and industries are thinking about that as well. AI is a potential to create new industries, not thought of yet. Job opportunities will emerge in fields that may not exist today. And these are all going to happen because of new and disruptive type of startups or large companies engaging in these types of opportunities to extend and uh, expand themselves. Uh, it is very possible that Google gets into robotics or Amazon gets into robotics, right? Um, these companies have huge appetites and enormous amount of money. Uh, but also it's an opportunity for disruptive startups. The true extent of AI's transformative power is beyond our current imagination. Just like many of the other revolutions like internet or prior to that electricity uh, and so on have had. But the percolation of these advanced technologies has taken time. For example, we can talk later about how long it took electricity and IT to spread. Examples include AI powered healthcare, telemedicine, autonomous transportation, which people have been investing for quite a long time, and Elon Musk continues to push these types of uh, areas. Uh, and of course, the augmented and virtual reality experiences, precision agriculture, clean energy solutions, and of course, security is a moving target in all these personalized fashion, AI-driven finance, smart city management, educational technology, AI-powered content generation, genomics, personalized medicine, the list keeps continuing. So AI is going to touch every single field. But AI itself has a lot of bottlenecks. Our lab has had substantial amount of work in the AI area, both the old and the new, and we continue to do research in advanced AI technologies. So um, we are speaking from the experience. We have used, for example, transformers and many computer vision algorithms in our lab for a fairly long time. And we also have been immersed in deep learning technologies. At one point, I actually worked with Jan Likun, who's the other co-inventor of the deep learning networks before he became famous. Uh, integration of such sensors, uh, new sensors with AI and AI control of physical and machines and equipment. You've been exposed to IoT and many other types of workflows that um, AI can be put into use. So AI will get behind all of that in different shapes and forms, including the old machine learning algorithms. AI can also use, be used to control machines and equipment, which I'm personally very excited about. So it's going to start helping um, us build new engineering worlds where AI can help in optimization and so on, custom production and other new technologies, including such as those for 3D printing. These industries will offer new avenues for employment, reflecting the transformative impact of AI across different sectors. So for example, a new demonstration by Google called Palmy that trained a model 
with 560 billion parameters. Well, large number of parameters don't uh, necessarily mean that it performs better, but as opposed to chat GPT-3, the first one, which used 180 billion parameters, okay? So um, considering this advancement, PAMI actually embed, embeds or represents images and words and objects, physical objects, all in one space, and therefore, this new era of visual languages are emerging. So the transformer model not only has impact in the textual and natural language programming world, but also in the physical world. Just like large language models, they're called large vision models, and they are even larger and bigger. So once the physical world and the language gets represented in the same so-called embedding, we'll talk later about it, what it allows you to do is you can um, start developing means by which you can go from language to control signals with, for example, to control robots. So robots now can transition and become special purpose machines and the general purpose human interaction capability becomes the AI agent. Such transformations will allow anyone to program machines in factories, for example, taking away such skills bias. Currently, the skills are biased towards people that know programming, for example. Okay, so imagine you're trying to instruct a robot to perform a task. Traditional robots might require complex programming to understand and execute your command. However, for example, in Google's Palm E case, this interaction becomes as natural as talking to another person. Think about how we as humans process information. That's why the current GPTs have a transformative impact because language and human thought are very closely tied. When we think about these situations, our thoughts now starts blending words, images, sounds, and our awareness of our own body and the surroundings. For the first time when AR and VR uh, have started showing up in real world kind of situations, um, what we are seeing is that the AR and VR can also see our body, and I'll talk about this later. And um, this perspective that the machine is starting to see from the way that we see things combined with AI in the physical world can have enormous impact in terms of how we do physical work. So PAMI is designed to function similarly. It is trained with a unique data set that includes not just text, but also images and information about the robot's own state. So you provide a command to the robot with a sentence that includes word. The robot combines these words with its own state and visual inputs from its onboard cameras. This hybrid visual language sentence now captures the environmental context, its own physical state, and the human issued command. Robot then uses PAMI to generate an appropriate plan for an action to fulfill the issued human command. Okay, in essence, PAMI significantly advances the integration of AI into robotic hardware and pushes it into the physical world. Of course, at this stage, there are a lot of changes that need to be implemented and to take place for us to insert such robots, for example, in our kitchen. Perhaps that might happen in the next 10, 15 years. Uh, but also use of it in other situations such as factories and so on and so forth. There are many, many bottlenecks that have to be overcome for such things to become applicable at scale. So it also introduces a framework that allows robots to make decisions based on context, much like humans, we all do, all without needing very intricate uh, instructions or coding. So AI's transformative potential is evident. Um, it is true that economic impact will hinge on widespread adoption. This is not going to happen very quickly. This entails more than occasional chatbot use. It demands total, perhaps, reorganization of businesses, and many businesses cannot get reorganized to these new transformations, and that's where startups and other things start playing a role. And data integration. Um, Nancy Stokey of University of Chicago stresses that diffusion of technological advancements is as important as innovation itself for long-term growth. The integration of AI is, is uh, starting to um, start tr triggering unforeseen industries. AI, you know, and I already mentioned many of these like healthcare, blockchain, and so on and so forth, uh, and augmented and extended reality. These sectors will present novel employment prospects, underscoring AI's far-reaching influence across diverse fields. What factors then determine the adoption of AI across many other fields? Well, that's hard yet to predict, but uh, let's move on to thing two, uh, which is the 
adoption lag. Currently, much of uh, AI work and um, development is happening in computer science. But we see, our lab sees, substantial opportunities across different areas, engineering, liberal arts, manufacturing, and businesses. So we can sort of pose that, is the end of programming as we know it is happening? The answer is yes. The conventional programming paradigm is on the brink of a very profound transformation. And this is important because coders are paid very high and kind of become a barrier for businesses to grow. Their talent is not widely available and so on and so forth. So instead of manual code creation, the future will start hinging on AI systems that are trained but not coded. This shift foresees the obsolescence of traditional programming. Of course, I'm taking an extreme point of view and I think there's a lot of truth to it. AI-driven systems will replace specialized software across many applications. Even in cases that require simple programs, AI will generate them bypassing manual coding. Much of this is already happening. The evolution transcends the substitution of programmers with tools like GitHub's Copilot. It revolutionizes and transforms the entire program writing process and also prioritizes model training over manual code authoring. Consequently, the future of computer science education itself will veer from teaching specific language coding tasks uh, and algorithmic uh, tasks, data structures, binary trees, and so on and so forth. And much of this kind of shift from slide rule as an instruction in engineering has happened. How many of you know what a slide rule uh, looks like? Uh, the second piece is trying to use it, or log tables, which all I have uh, been exposed to when I was a child. So what does commoditization and access to programming skills do? Okay, let me uh, get at that. So this was a recent science paper by Noy and Zhang, uh, published in 2023. They performed experiments entailing diverse tasks from creativity to analysis, writing and persuasion. They got a bunch of consultants in a, in a top company, and these consultants generated ideas for creative shoes, segmented markets, crafted promotional materials, and composed motivational memos. They uh, tested these, and the results um, aligned with expectations. AI-equipped consultants outperformed irrespective of prior exposure to the technology. This spanned task speed, quantity, and quality as assessed by humans and AI graders. Notably, lower scoring cons consultants showed a 43% boost with AI, leveling the field. This parallels how the steam shuffle nullified miners digging skills, for example. While AI hasn't reached that scale, skill leveling promises significant impact. Weaker firms with more to gain are incentivized to adopt AI, potentially reshaping adoption trends. There's also a lot of new challenges. As I suggested earlier, when um, new technologies emerge, people start putting effort into areas that are not so efficient. And educational sector is definitely one of them. So what I'm depicting here is AI bots and humans. And of course, we still continue to have a human teacher. But also, a lot of you know that we are using AI extensively, but with extreme supervision with the coaches and my uh, views in the class also. The onset of AI in education was initially sparked and is continued to be sparked by concerns, particularly regarding uh, many things happen with AI cheating and the transformation of uh, teaching methods are also happening. However, there's a belief that education will adapt to AI more effectively than other industries. AI acts as a proficient tutor and explainer, providing personalized learning experience for students. This not only benefits learners, but also enhances the teaching experience. Traditional teaching methods, such as lectures, primarily rely on passive learning, often leading to reduced retention and engagement. <laughs> My goal in particular is to increase your engagement and your retention. So therefore, active learning, on the other hand, promotes students' participation through problem solving and collaborative exercises, and it will prove more effective. You all know that you're participating in our class, which is modeled after all of these kinds of ideas. The challenge lies in integrating active learning with AI to create a more balanced and impactful, engaged and personalized educational experience. AI tutors can revolutionize education by handling content delivery, allowing teachers to focus on meaningful interactions with students. Teachers can leverage AI-generated insights to offer personalized support and guidance. 
Additionally, AI can also enable the creation of more effective active learning experiences in the classroom. Both students and teachers need to incorporate AI into their learning and teaching methods. This kind of a change will be needed to lead and improve learning outcomes and reduction of administrative tasks. The future of education is already here and it will promise to enhance the learning experience for all involved. So of course, um, there's a lot of new workforce needs and Gen AI, which we will talk about, will start de-skilling sophisticated manufacturing tasks. Imagine workers without high-tech education doing high-tech work of today. Well, we can, for example, walk to a robot and talk to program it. And augmented intelligence, human plus AI, reduces a substantial amount of learning and training. And Gen AI, the new generative form of AI, which we will talk about in the next module, is also embodied in forms that helps and trains, as well as humans may be able to learn from it. Augmented and virtual reality, for example, can become killer applications of all kinds of AI when integrated with sensors and AI. We have observed that hands-on learning with human augmentation, human plus AI, leads to higher learning gains if extended reality were designed for learning gains. Given all that, the integration of new AI technologies and with various types of applications and industries poses and can give us transformative applications such as new types of transformers that can hold immense potential. However, unlocking the potential of the AI in the current emerging form will necessitate a substantial, although often unquantifiable investments. It demands a fundamental overall of the production organization, for example. In addition to tangible assets like equipment and infrastructure, companies must forge new business processes cultivate managerial expertise, people like you, upskill the workforce, update software, well, that's a hard thing to do, nurture other intangible assets. The inception of such innovations like general purpose transformer and its associated counterparts will now birth entirely new novel workforce. And that's not gonna happen overnight. This all is gonna happen over a period of time and great effort and reshape existing industries. This juncture also offers a lot of wealth opportunities for entrepreneurs to pioneer novel approaches in utilizing ongoing innovations. Thus, we can forge new sectors and industries beyond the confines of current practices. The imperative now lies in fostering collaboration among stakeholders to coordinate these investments effectively, ensuring a harmonized and impactful advancement in AI integration for betterment of both human and the AI capabilities. So uh, with that, um, I do want to end. So I did recommend that the federal computation for Academia continues uh, to grow substantially. The current compute power is just not enough for many of researchers, um, including uh, people like our labs. Uh, we need to fund AI educational driven research uh, outside of computer science and substantial amount of funding in the order of billions is needed Ensuring AI diffuses across all these different sectors and into the physical world will be very important next stage for AI. These are all key strategies that can not only be important for our um, own productivity, but also uh, productivity of sectors and eventually our national competitiveness. So I wanted to thank uh, the NSF funding on the future of work uh, at the human technology frontier. In fact, one of our co-PIs uh, on that project, Darren Asimoglu, just won the Nobel Prize a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, NSF Partnership for Innovation and uh, many other funding sources, our students, and um, Tom Mallott, one of our alumni who has uh, been generous to our labs, a gift from Parametric Technology Corporations, and many others that helped me generate the images and pictures in this uh, presentation. So thank you very much.